Hi everyone, Lee Packett here and you are watching The Business of Law where we talk about the challenges and the opportunities facing the legal profession. We're taking a look at the hedge fund space today. I'm happy to say my guest is Ron Geffner. He's from Sadis and Goldberg and uh, his clients had a pretty rough 2015. Uh, looking at the numbers here, just in the first three quarters of 2015, more funds closed than all of in 2014. What's going on in this space? Why is everyone having so much trouble? Well, first and foremost, you're presuming that the numbers we're getting are completely accurate. Mm -hmm. And I would argue or challenge the numbers and the accuracy. I don't know, if I look at our client population, we represent a little over 1,000 funds. It, the, the super, super, super majority or a very small slice of those are considering closing or closing. In my mind, I've only received calls of maybe from five or six managers. What made it challenging for some of them was the size of their operations and the frustration of dealing with um, markets that they really didn't agree with or understand or they felt lacked fundamental uh, reflection of uh, uh, fundamental information. Well, let's back up here. Would you agree that it was a tough year for the hedge fund space? I mean, these are Bloomberg numbers. We're looking at first three quarters alone, it was something like 670 closing, give or take. And in all of 2014, it was like 664. I there's, would say it's a rough year. Here. It's been a, it was a rough year for people in the financial services industry as a whole, mm -hmm. and it's been very challenging for people post 2008, and people are trying to make sense of the markets now. When we're also talking about funds, there, there's hedge funds. Some they're not always trading equities, which I don't know if Bloomberg's looking at what population of the fund industry itself. Mm -hmm. the, the other component is you've also had a run up in the number of funds in the last year or two. So based on some of the data I'm reading. Some were saying that the population of the fund industry increased as high as 15,000 funds. And so you had competitive pressures there. And then the more I read about it, and I don't necessarily know from a transparency perspective, and I'm not just limiting it to Cetus and Goldberg clients, I'm suggesting as a whole, it seems from things I'm reading, that many of the larger funds crowded into the same investments. And crowding in wasn't the challenge, but it was exiting some of those investments. And if you're also taking into consideration the population, Based on 2015, I think 11% of the funds in existence controlled about 92% of the assets in the industry. Huh. Very interesting. So you've got to look at, I think, the statistics in its entirety and not just one slice. So I want to drill down on a very, very small slice here. Uh, a $1.5 billion fund called Nevsky uh, threw in the towel earlier this week. And it was interesting to me because they didn't lose money in 2015. They actually made a little bit of money. It didn't quite look that bad from a financial standpoint. But they put out a newsletter explaining why they were closing. And uh, they blamed uh, the situation on a lot of political uncertainty, hard to trust numbers coming out of China, hard to get a feel for where the world is going both politically and economically, but also saying that uh, they really couldn't compete with algorithmic trading. Is it a lot harder today to be a, a fundamental investor than it used to be? It sounds, it's, it, it's something that never really quite occurred to me that these guys who run these funds, and they're, they're large numbers, but they're not titanically large. Um, how are they going to go out and compete with someone who invests billions of dollars in computerized trading? So, so let's trading? take the storyline a little more slowly, right? Mm -hmm. First, the political message of why they're closing the fund may or may not be entirely accurate. I have no idea what the real story is, and I'm not suggesting necessarily that that's not the real story, but we don't really know. That's one. Two, managing other people's money is stressful. If you talk to a non-industry person, their mindset is, well, the markets are open, with these limited amount of times, they close at 4.30, manager gets to go home and, and relax. That's not the reality. As you interact with people on a day-to-day, -day, they're looking at the markets 24 hours a day. They're trying to figure out if the butterfly fla flapping its wings in Singapore is going to have an effect on the markets here in the United States. And they have to wake up being prepared, taking in all data that is essentially 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's a very, very stressful job. Mm -hmm. So now we go to fundamentals versus, uh, qu I guess, uh, qu uh, qualitative and quantitative analysis and um, computerized trading. And this is an age old, well, this is becoming a hotter and hotter topic. I don't have a good answer for you. I don't trade the markets in that capacity. I do hear that as a complaint. But as I hear that as a complaint, we also see other managers that are doing it exceedingly well who are not quant traders 
So it, it's not really clear where the truth really lies. Mm. I really like your point on what it means to, to run a hedge fund in today's day and age. Barton Biggs wrote a fantastic book on, on the life of a hedge fund manager and it uh, doesn't look easy. No, Lots of money, but really, uh, it's hard earned. Well, it's lots of money for a handful of people. What also most of America isn't seeing, that these are entrepreneurs in many cases. So not, not in every case, but in many cases. You have managers that are coming out there trying to launch a business. They may, it's often referred to as friends and family. So there was an article recently about a manager who launched, I think, this week with $4.5 billion, which is one of the larger launches. But that's an exception. Mm -hmm. That's not minority to the case. I, I would guess you have funds launching with a couple hundred thousand dollars. What's the average? I don't know. I don't know. What we're seeing as a range is somewhere between five and fifty million dollars in assets under management. If, if to somebody else who's trying to calculate the numbers, five to fifty million, depending on where you're coming from, may sound like a lot of money. But if you're there's two fees that are derived generally from most hedge funds. There's a management fee, which is based on assets under management, and it's generally a percentage ranging from anywhere from one percent to one percent to two percent of assets under management. So if I'm launching, let's say, with fifty million dollars, my you know, my, um, at the max, I might have a million gross of revenue coming in. Also sounds like a lot of money, not when you start looking at all the costs it takes to run the business, and the manager has possibly taken a pay cut to go do this and putting up their own capital as risk. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a stress of not only running your portfolio, there's a stress of managing people. There's a stress of dealing with counterparties, the broker-dealer, your administrator, your auditor. Unfortunately for some people, their lawyer, hopefully not in our case. Dealing with employees, dealing hiring a chief operating officer, or chief financial officer, it's it's coming up with a business plan. It's executing on the business plan, and you're trying to get all these musical instruments. You're the maestro. You're trying to get them all, all the performers to operate in harmony with one another on top of a market that doesn't always agree in the direction you think it is. Mm. So, looking forward to 2016. Hopefully, it's a better year for your clients. What are you telling them? Well, this is these are some of the things that we're seeing. We're seeing that assets in the hedge fund industry seem to be on the increase. Mm. Based on articles I'm reading and conversations we're having with people, we anticipate that assets under management within the hedge fund community will hit an all-time high. Two. What's driving that? Where's the money coming from? Money's coming, I would think, from institutional investors mm. who have been disappointed with returns overall in the marketplace. Two, we're seeing if we look to institutional investors, they were allocating to the largest of managers. We look back to 2008 during the financial crisis, money flew to safe havens, safe havens from an insti it's called institutional risk or institutionalization. They wanted to take out operational risk as best as possible. So money went into firms with 10 billion or greater, or maybe even as low as 5 billion or greater. If you look at the statistics from how I look at it, and it's possibly arguable, you can read it any way you want, but we're seeing now that institutional investors are going further and further down into the size of managers that they have historically allocated to. So if we look at it in 08, if money is being allocated to managers with five or 10 billion, we're seeing it going to sub one billion in assets under management. And therefore, there's a theory now that smaller or younger managers may be outperforming the larger managers because they're going to less crowded trades. Hmm. And there's also another maxim that it's easier to run a smaller pool of money than it is a larger pool of money. And, and it varies, there are some larger managers that are still doing well, so I don't want to take away from that. The other component, we're starting to see more and more allocations coming from Europe. There was a chill. Europe seemed to be um, hit worse in 08. You also had various rules and regulations that had to be digested by the marketplace. You had AIFMD, the Alternative Investment Fund Managers Directive. It takes time for new laws to be understood and properly accepted by the industries that they're in. Mm. And then, um, Finally, what I would say is, due to market volatility, which we've been experiencing in the last few days, I would imagine we, were gonna see, we will start seeing a greater disparity in performance among managers, not just hedge, hedge and private equity, as well as traditional wealth managers who are in long-only products. And so I think that will really deal with a large um, disparity, a reallocation among managers. Mm. Markets have been choppy lately. Um, let's close out by taking a look at the regulatory picture here. Anything coming down the pike that might be of interest? I feel like right now we're still digesting quite a bit. There are changes to the form ADV component. We're seeing um, changes in distribution and, and various laws affecting the distribution of assets. But uh, it, it seems that the ones I'm aware of, well, 
well, I'll go back. N the accredited investor definition may be revised. Where the, for inflationary purposes, it hasn't been touched in about 20 years. Mm -hmm. Where the qualification to be an accredited investor, if it's raised, will shrink the, the pool of prospective investors that can invest in funds that are organized under what's called Section 3C1, or the, you know, for high net worth purposes. So that, that is something we anticipate might come into effect. It's going to be hard to enter the market, presumably. It is, but it's a, for the smaller funds. Mm -hmm. But you also have, conversely, the Jobs Act, which came into effect a few years ago, which enables fund managers, or well, when I say fund managers, anybody who's engaging in a private placement to make use of general solicitation. That said, we've seen very few firms utilizing this ability for, for various reasons. So it doesn't quite sound like the United States government is making life that much harder for the hedge fund community. Is there anything that's on their wish list? Uh, on, on the fund manager's wish list or on the government's on wish fund list? Fund managers. I'm sure the government has a huge wish yeah, list. Yeah, I think, I think what's happened you have is when you have a financial crisis, you have the government going the complete opposite way in, on the uh, pendulum and mm -hmm. over-regulating. And my complaint would be to the, to the government, and I'm ex-SEC, I used to prosecute money managers, mm -hmm. so I'm all for clean markets. Um, but I would argue that they should, have, sh they should have passed laws a little bit more slowly, allowed the market to absorb it, because the United States, if you look at statistics, we seem to be driven by a population of entrepreneurs, not just in the financial services community as a whole. And the more hurdles we create to make it harder for entrepreneurs to set up businesses, I think it negatively impacts our society. Ron, really interesting stuff. Thanks for stopping by and talking Thanks to us. Thanks for today. having me. Of course. That's Ron Geffner from Sadius and Goldberg. If you'd like to see more of the stuff we're working on, be sure to go check us out online. You can find us at mimesislaw.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. If you'd like today's video, be sure to subscribe on YouTube. If you're listening on podcasts, write a review for us. It makes all the difference in the world. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.